es difícil imaginar una zona tan hermosa tendría un lado oscuro. It may be hard to imagine that a beautiful area like the Plaza de las Tres Culturas within the community of Tlatelolco in Mexico City was once a stage of a dramatic massacre. In the 1960s, political discontent was felt throughout Mexico, and this is the story of the students' fight against the corrupt and unchallenged regime of the Institutional Revolutionary Party that was in power since 1929. By the 1960s, President Gustavo Diaz Ordez's policies had become far too authoritarian as the student movement revealed that Mexico's democracy was only a fallacy. In 1968, student uprisings around the world, such as Paris's feminist and gay movement rights and the U.S.'s leftist student movements, ignited worldwide discussion. Specifically in Mexico City, overwhelming frustrations boiled over as the city was preparing to host the 1968 Olympics. From Diaz Ordez's perspective, the Olympics was a major investment in economic growth and tourism for Mexico. However, it came at a heavy price tag for the country, causing general inflations and even making the Olympic tickets unaffordable for the average Mexican. During the summer of 1968, there had been several protests all around Mexico City, and repressive tactics had been implemented by the government, such as sending riot police to universities and arresting the movement's leaders and radicals. Pressure was mounting on Diaz or Des, both internally and externally. An external example would be the United States. Walt Whitman Ristow, the Special Assistant of National Security Affairs, reported to the U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson on August 29, 1968, expressing concerns for growing student activism in Mexico. This declassified document revealed that were violent intentions to control the protests and Ristow's doubt about Diaz or Daz's ability to control it in time for the Olympics. These concerns were also rooted in fear of communist uprising. Additionally, the CIA threatened the Mexican government with the possibility of removing the Olympic Games from Mexico if student protests persisted. On October 2nd, 1968, just 10 days before Mexico City began to host the Olympics, there was a student protest that happened here at the Plaza de las Tres Culturas. On that fatal October 2nd, there was a calm, unarmed crowd of thousands of people, consisting of students, teachers, citizens, workers, even mothers and children. There was an announcement made that said that they wanted to postpone a future protest in order to curb suspected violence. However, what the crowd didn't know was that the army, police, and undercover officers were enclosing in on them at that very moment. This government-recorded footage was released over 20 years after the massacre, revealing an organized and premeditated attack on the protesters, supporters, and even innocent bystanders. As it rained bullets in the Plaza de las Tres Culturas, protesters fled for their lives, hundreds were killed, and many survivors were detained. This action by the Mexican government was enough to suppress the movement, silence the survivors, and instill fear into the population. The Olympic Games went on undisturbed. By the next morning, the government had cleaned up the plaza and erased almost all the evidence of the massacre. This monument was erected on exactly October 2nd of 1993, 25 years after the student massacre. It was designed as a commemoration for those who had died 
and suffered. At the top of the monument is a list of 20 known victims, a much higher number than what the government declared in 1968 at only four. Today, it's still highly contested of how many people died, but usually estimated at at least 300 victims. At the bottom of the monument is part of a poem, which really reflects how tragic this event really was. Who are they? How many of them are there? Not a one, not a trace of any of them the next day. By dawn, the plaza had been swept clean. All the lead stories in the papers were about the weather and on TV, on the radio, at the movie theaters. The programs went on as scheduled. There was no interruptions to make an announcement, not even a moment of silence at the banquet because the celebration went on right according to plan. Today, the memorial at the Plaza de las Tres Culturas is a reminder of the brutality many had faced. Overall, the commemoration had inspired constant investigation and to continue the legacy of those who lost their lives in hope for a better future.